This time it's five sensational six-cylinder motorcycles. Rare and exotic, only a handful of six-cylinder motorcycles have ever reached full production because while they may offer obvious advantages, smoothness and power, they do have several disadvantages too, obviously weight and even more importantly, price. And ultimately they offer few advantages over a really good four-cylinder bike and that's what most people plumb for. But that being said, there really is nothing like a mighty six-cylinder motorcycle. And so here's five of the very best available. Kawasaki Z13 So you're Kawasaki. In the early 70s, you had completely trumped Honda's CB750 by producing a much more impressive machine in the form of the Z1. So along come Honda and fight back with their six-cylinder CBX model. What do you do? Well, you one-up them again with the Z13, or KZ13, if in American. The Z13 is the ultimate embodiment of the muscle bike. It's too big for its own good, it's too powerful, and it completely outperforms its mega chassis. No wonder then that the machine has a massive cult following. Kawasaki Z13 arrived in 1979, and in every way it completely one-upped Honda's CBX 1000. It ran a six-cylinder engine, but this time it was water-cooled and of a massive 1300 cc's. In an effort to keep the engine narrow, they designed the engine with an oversquare or long stroke configuration. Kawasaki claimed a then very impressive 120 horsepower, and of course, engine torque was mountainous. And it needed to be, because it was pushing along a lot of weight. The machine had a wet weight of 322 kilos, that's 709 pounds. And this underlies the major shortcoming of these massive bikes. The standard quarter mile time was a massively impressive 11.9 seconds. You have to remember that more than a decade earlier, Norton's Commando had managed the same in just 1.1 of a second slower, with a fraction of the power, and problematically of course, a fraction of the weight. On the road, not surprisingly, this massive machine was a bit of a handful, particularly if you filled up that 27 litre fuel tank. But on the bright side, this was definitely a bike that was going to get you noticed. And the great thing is actually fuel consumption wasn't too bad at all, so that big fuel tank would carry you an awful long way. On the downside of course you couldn't really make use of the massive top speed because it was a sit bolt upright bike and in its early forms had no sort of screen or fairing at all. Not surprisingly this monster machine was fairly expensive. But despite this the bike was surprisingly long lived, remaining on sale until 1989. The Honda CBX 1000. The CBX 1000 is very much a case of Honda doing just like they did with the later RVF 750 and producing a bike simply because it could. Because somewhat amazingly, this is a bike whose design began life as a 250 Grand Prix bike of the mid 60s. Honda developed the bike in the late 70s to replace its CB750 on top of its motorcycle tree. The machine had that incredibly impressive 1047cc 105 brake horsepower 6 cylinder air cooled motor, direct overhead cams and 24 valves. Although of course Shakira Honda himself was not best pleased when his groundbreaking 6 cylinder bike wasn't actually the first 6 cylinder production, Benelli Say beating him to the punch but of course the Honda was much more advanced. It used the engine as a stressed member in the frame. And although wide, Honda had done a good job keeping the machine down to a reasonable level so it wasn't actually that much wider than a typical four cylinder bike. Although it was heavier of course, tipping the scales at 270 kilos wet. But performance was impressive, the machine could top 140 miles an hour and fuel consumption wasn't too bad either. And even better, the chassis actually worked pretty well too so Whilst it looked massive, it cornered surprisingly well. But of course the machine was very expensive, 
so sales were always going to be somewhat limited, especially when Honda released their CB900F the following year. This machine outsold the CBX by more than 2 to 1 and offered very similar performance in a much simpler, lighter and more straightforward package. So in 81 they redefined the bike as a sports tour, offering a vast and very effective fairing and a mildly detuned engine. But that then was the end of the line for the CBX and it was discontinued in 82. But if you like your bikes to sound like Formula 1 cars, this is the bike for you. Nelly say Benelli say say simply meaning six in Italian was introduced in 1973 in its 750 cc form making the very first six cylinder mass production motorcycle the development of the machine was masterminded by Alejandro Di Tommaso the Argentinian tycoon he owned Benelli and Motor Guzzi at the time and originally wanted the bike as a sort of prestige model at the top of the Motor Guzzi range, but was persuaded to keep the V-twins going and instead badge the Sei as a Benelli. Like the four-cylinder Benellis, the machine is fairly obviously developed from the CB500 single overhead cam four-cylinder Hondas. Unlike the Honda 4s, Benelli moved the alternator up behind the cylinders at the back of the engine, rather than sitting on the end of the crank. This of course makes the engine somewhat narrower than it may otherwise have been. To help further keeping the plot narrower, they also used one carburetor per two cylinders, so the bike only actually has three carburetors, compared to the four carburetors you would typically find on a four cylinder Honda, or the six that you find on a CBX. Despite this, the engine made a claimed 76 horsepower at 9000 RPM, which is enough for a top speed of just over 125 miles an hour. And as designed, even at these very high speeds, that six cylinder engine was very smooth indeed. The bike's angular styling came courtesy of the Gear Design Company. These, of course, are more famous for their work with Ford motor cars during the 1970s and, and of course, into the 80s. The machine weighed in at 562 pounds wet or 255 kilos. So, to stop the bike, they'd had twin discs at the front and a large drum brake at the rear, at least on the 750. Sales of the Sei, given its high price, were, of course, fairly slow. In fact, only 3,200 machines had been sold by the end of 1979. So Benelli increased the bore and stroke of the engine to create the Sei 900. And this machine featured revised styling, with a motor guzzy style bikini fairing and an all-new 6-2 exhaust. The enlarged engine only really provided a fairly modest increase in power, up to around 80 horsepower. So performance was very little different, although, of course, there was more torque. But Benelli found, like Honda and Kawasaki, that there wasn't really a great appetite for these fantastic six-cylinder machines. They were just too expensive and perhaps not really worth the trouble of a four-cylinder bike. But production continued in tiny numbers until the end of the 80s, with only around 2,000 of the Sei 900s ever leaving the factory. BMW K1600 The BMW K1600 first went on sale in 2011, initially in the GT form. This would later be sublimated by the more luxurious GTL and the K1600B, which is a bagger design really intended for the US market. The machine was designed to provide a slightly more sporty alternative to Honda's mighty Goldwing and uses a 1649cc straight six transversely mounted engine with of course shaft final drive. Interestingly, the use of modern design techniques and materials and of course that water cooling have allowed the machine to be the narrowest cross the frame six ever produced. Although like so many six cylinder bikes before it, it does have some cooling problems for those middle cylinders, on earlier models at least. BMW have done a great deal of work to try and keep the overall weight down including of course the use of an aluminium chassis and somewhat ingeniously the use of hollow camshafts. Even so the bike still weighs in at around 703 pounds fully equipped with fuel around 319 kilos. But the bike is of course very powerful 160 horsepower so has a top speed of around 189 miles an hour and throughout the six cylinder engine is of course silky smooth. 2022 would see a redesign 
And although that mighty 55 degree angled six cylinder engine remains largely unchanged, some improvements were made to aid cooling. And of course there was an all digital display with LCD screens. And navigation now being included integrally into the system. And this in concert with a whole suite of rider aids and management systems means that the BMW K1600 is one of the most sophisticated bikes available today. But it's in a tough marketplace today. It's expensive and its main opposition, the Honda Goldwing, has recently had a major update with a lightened chassis, with many testers believing that the all-new Goldwing slightly edges the BMW out as an overall package. Nevertheless, this is a hell of a machine, and if you spent your money on one, I seriously doubt you're going to be disappointed. The Horix VR6 The Horix Motorcycle Company was founded by one Fritz Kleeman in 1923 in Bad Homburg in the region of Hesse in Germany. Horix built motorcycles with German-made Columbus engines during the 1920s and in 1925 the two companies were merged and the company would build a reputation for producing high quality four stroke motorcycles. So it seems very appropriate that today the company now based in Augsburg would produce the VR6. The machine was first shown to the press in 2010, but it would take until 2013 before the first real production bikes would appear on the roads. The machine uses, as the name suggests, a V6 engine, although it's actually very hard to tell for the casual observer because the angle of the V is in fact very narrow, allowing the whole lot to be put into one single casting. So the engine is a 15 degree V6 of 1218 cc's, which produces around 162 horsepower. Cleverly the design makes use of just three camshafts, with the middle camshaft running double duties operating valves in both the fore and aft cylinders. Clearly the design of the engine was very much influenced by the popularity of this layout amongst Volkswagen Group company engines in particular. This mighty engine is of course paired to a six-speed gearbox and is controlled by a whole suite of electronic systems. The machine has a dry weight of some 220 kilos so it's not the lightest but the use of expensive top-notch suspension systems means that the whole lot is kept in check for the corners. And this is of course backed up by a top quality braking system. All this makes the machine one hell of a super naked and one that has an extremely unique exhaust sound. But this is a bike hand built in tiny numbers, so it's very exclusive, with prices ranging from a not terribly unreasonable £22,000 for the base model to, well, let's face it, much higher for the more limited edition carbon fibre equipped models, somewhere over the £40,000 mark. But let's be honest here, you get an awful lot for your money, because this is a very exclusive high performance machine and if you turn up at your local run out, you're very, very unlikely to see another one. Whatever collections of bike would you like to see us feature in our videos? Maybe you own a bike you'd like to see us test ride? Either way, drop us a line. Do you hope you enjoyed that video? If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, Thank you very much for watching.